Thank you, Madam Speaker. And tonight, uh, with my colleague across the way, which we've had a discussion before, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about carbon tax. Just a couple of definitions on rebate, just to get that one out of the way first. An amount of money that was returned to you, especially by the government. That's from Cambridge. From uh, the Oxford Dictionary, a partial refund to someone who's paid too much money for tax. So there was a Hill Times, and we know the flavor of the Hill Times cartoon in it recently, where the Prime Minister was holding a wallet and handing some cash back to a citizen. And the citizen looked at it and said, well, that's my wallet you've got. Well, that cartoon spread out, and I've had a lot of reaction in my constituency, saying, doesn't the government understand it's our money they're giving back, and not all of it. They took the money from us to begin with. So if they didn't take it in the first place, it would be a benefit to us. So a rebate, um, the understanding is giving money back, which was theirs. Interesting concept. Um, so one of the challenges with carbon tax is some of the issues that it's created. And people will talk about the amount of cost in agriculture, and we've talked about this before, is the huge part that ag producers face. And I have irrigation in my writing, which my colleague knows well about. But it, it's costing huge amounts in the ag sector, which there is no rebate back for large producers that I have in my writing, because uh, we're talking a lot of money. So the other side of it, they talk about the different kinds of energy that we have. So Alberta wind farms operated, let's say, for example, I've got an article here that in November of 20, in November 24, 2023, Alberta's 44 wind farms operated 0.3% capacity on that specific day. So alternative energy, when we talk about wind and solar, is a little bit of a problem. But we still have the carbon tax moving from $65 a ton to $80 a ton, and then to $170 by 2023. So the Saskatchewan uh, Farm Association producers figured out that's $7.42 per acre in 2023, and $17 per acre by 2030. That's a huge amount of money. The other thing that scientists are beginning to say is advances with technology are figuring out that the amount of carbon tax or carbon that's absorbed by agriculture is huge to the point that they should be getting and selling those credits just like solar and wind does. So the technology is showing the amount of carbon that agriculture is absorbing is not recognized and is beyond being equal but is above equal and it should be even credited with the amount like wind and solar is. So it's a huge shift that needs to be made of what recognition of what agriculture is doing with carbon and how it's being absorbed and even as much as to sell those credits. And scientists are now recognizing that. But the former Greenpeace founder, Patrick Moores, made some interesting comments. The idea that wind and solar are going to replace fossil fuels or nuclear or hydroelectricity is absolutely insane. This is Patrick Moore from my generation. He said there's other things that we need to do and not depend on solar and wind. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Agriculture and Agri-Foods. Uh, Madam Speaker, I, 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 I do have tremendous respect for my uh, honourable colleague on the, on the other side, and, and there are too few members of Parliament in this place that defend farmers, and I do want to say thank you to him. He is somebody that uh, defend farmers, but so am I. And there are others on this side of the House, not tonight, but there are others on this side of the House that do uh, defend uh, farmers. And I, I do... I do want to correct the record when uh, the honourable members say that farmers get absolutely nothing back on a carbon rebate. And this is something I fought very hard along with uh, my colleagues from King's Hance and uh, PEI, uh, others members from, uh, from, from PEI. We uh, in Ontario, we certainly uh, recognize that there is an issue uh, with, the re with regards to natural gas and, and propane. Um, but farmers are already exempt for uh, upwards of 90% of um, 
carbon pricing on their farm, so they don't pay dollars for diesel use on the farm. Uh, but they do get a rebate for natural gas and propane. And this year, I think it'd be useful for, for the Honourable Member to know, because I'm sure he wants to share the good news, that uh, farmers are eligible for a rebate of a dollar and 86 cents per $1,000 of expenses on farms. And that equals to, I will recognize, not 100% of a rebate. The problem is the government is not aware who is using propane or natural gas, but 100% of uh, carbon pricing that is collected by the federal government in that particular province is returned to farmers. All of it is returned to farmers through a, uh, a rebate to uh, farmers, and that equals out to $1.86 this year. As carbon pricing moves up, that amount will also increase to ensure that farmers do get a fair share. The other par uh, issues that he has recognized is we recognize that input costs uh, have gone up uh, on farms. The government of Canada does not control that. And what we did is we've said that we will increase the, um, from $100,000, which I'll remind my honorable colleague, when the leader of the official opposition when is, was in government and sitting at the cabinet table, None of that was increased under his watch, and I didn't hear a single word. I remember, I, was, I wasn't on the Hill, but I was close to the Hill and watching very closely. I don't remember them advocating for an increased amount on the advanced payment program, interest-free portion, when costs went up. And I'll remind him, they did go up in 2008. So what we've decided to do is we recognize during the pandemic, we've increased that. We went from $250,000 to three, from 100,000, pardon me, from $100,000 to $350,000. And now we've moved to $250,000. And I hope my honorable colleague will support that because he knows it's important for farmers. And secondly, he recognizes and he understands that technology and farmers are good stewards of the land. They are capturing carbon. We're working through with farmers. Uh, we recognize that they're doing that. Universities are working with farmers to find a proper uh, measurement. And the methane protocol at, uh, th that Environment Canada is working, I believe, will provide an opportunity for farmers to, uh, to participate in the carbon economy, uh, which the, the entire world wants to have access to. And then lastly, um, we believe in SMR technology, which my honorable colleague knows. That we don't just believe in wind and solar, but we also believe in SMR. And finally, they want to axe a tax, but they will impose a tariff because other countries are talking about a carbon import tariff. If we don't have a carbon price on pollution, they will impose a tariff. So I don't want to leave our farmers out. We need to act right now. The Honourable Member for Bow River. Thank you, and to my colleague for the information he has shared, and I always do appreciate it. And there are those programs that we work at together, provincially and federally. We look at different things that happen in our climate and different things that happen in our economy. But the challenge in the sense of irrigation, we've talked about this a number of times, it's the electricity that's used, not the diesel, not the natural gas. Irrigation is huge with electricity, huge. I've got one farmer operation and he showed me the bills. He's up to $100,000 in carbon tax. But I've got a small rink in a rural area that supports kids' programs, and these people are keeping that rink alive, and it's costing them $700 a month in carbon tax, and they're fundraising with bake sales and hamburger sales to try to keep that rink in a rural area alive, but the $700 a month is killing them, and this is an important thing in our rural communities. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Madam Speaker, uh, you know, I, I agree with the honourable member. We should have a regional ap approach to carbon pricing, and I would hope that this particular member would advocate with his own provincial government to uh, acknowledge that there are regional differences amongst jurisdictions. So all we're asking for, and I think the prime minister wrote a letter a few weeks ago, about a month ago, if, if I should say, to ask provinces to come up with their own plans, but a plan that respects our Paris Accord and a plan that will ensure that our farmers don't get slapped with a carbon import tariff.